SSL Family Dad with Simple Suburban Living and today we're going to be talking about iron and iron deficiencies in aquaponic systems. Okay, so one of the things that I get requested uh, to do videos on often is nutrient deficiencies and you know how am I supplementing this or that. Um, I did a thing on calcium previously, on calcium fertilizer, kind of making a natural calcium additive for the system, uh, which I use from time to time just depending on uh, what, I, what I feel like I need. Um, now nutrient deficiencies are kind of a tricky subject because there's so many variables there, there's so many different things that can go wrong, and a lot of times you might have several nutrients that are deficient, and it makes it really hard to kind of figure out what is what is your deficiency? Um, a few different subscribers have sent me a, um, a couple and shared with me a couple different sheets that they use. And uh, thank you guys for sharing that stuff back with me because um, these are extremely helpful. I'm going to put a link in the description to a couple of these nutrient deficiency guides that, uh, I've been, that have been shared with me um, that you guys can use as well. Um, very, very helpful to have a, a guide you know, to help identify you know, just by looking at the leaves um, what nutrients you might be deficient in. So I'll also kind of give a, a shout out or share um, another channel, that I, a resource that I use, and that's Bright Agrotech. Um, Dr. Nate Story over there has done a whole bunch of videos and um, website articles on nutrient deficiencies, each one specifically macro and micronutrients. Uh, he goes into great detail on the, the science behind those deficiencies and how plants use uh, different you know, minerals and, um, and chemicals and things like that. So, I would highly recommend you check those, those resources out as well. Um, a lot of my information comes from there as well as my own research on the internet and also experimenting with my system. So kind of sharing all that information with you guys. Um, the, the nutrient I'm going to talk about most today is iron. Um, iron seems to be one of the things that is most deficient in aquaponic systems, especially for people who are just getting started. And that is because iron uh, really interacts with plants at a much lower pH. And there's also many different ions of iron that interact differently. So you can't just throw like a, a rusty nail <laughs> in your aquaponic system, you know, or rust and things like that. And, and it doesn't, it's not in a water soluble form. So the iron won't be taken up by the plants very efficiently that way. And so I'll kind of go through the, the, the deficiency guide and show you what I'm using here to supplement iron in my system and why that's important. Okay, so we'll kind of take a close look at one of our, a couple of our leaves here. This is on a bell pepper plant. Um, and uh, one of the things we're looking for, so we're talking about iron deficiencies today, um, is what's called chlorosis. So chlorosis of the leaves or even on grass and things like that is basically yellowing of the green tissue of the leaf. Um, generally in an, in an iron deficiency, you'll see, you'll have nice green veins in the leaf but you'll end up getting some yellowing or a lot of yellowing in the main part, main section of the leaf. Now it shouldn't be spotting or like brown spots or yellow spots. It should be, you know, the majority of the leaf tissue will start to yellow. Um, this leaf actually has some other deficiencies that I'm, I'm looking at here. We've got some curling of the tip of the uh, leaf and we've got some yellowing and brown, browning around the edge of the leaf. So this represents a different deficiency, probably uh, maybe fat, phosphorus or magnesium. Um, which we'll dig into more in a later video, but um, I really shouldn't have an, uh, too much of an iron issue in this system. I do supplement from time to time, and I try to keep an eye on that. But uh, so chlorosis again, yellowing of the leaves, but you should have nice um, green protruding veins in the leaf, so you'll be able to see that really well. Now this is another leaf here from the pepper plant. This is a little bit younger leaf, um, and this might show a little bit of an iron deficiency. This is fairly common. We can see our nice green veins here, um, but we're starting to get a little bit of yellowing. So at, at one point in the system, it may have been a little short of iron, um, or it could be getting short now, and uh, we'll need to supplement a little bit. So um, so that's kind of a, 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 a telltale sign. Iron, again, is one of those de one of those nutrients that is deficient often. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, but And it's also kind of hard to identify 100%. A lot of this is a kind of a guess and check method. You know, there are a lot of nutrient deficiencies that look very similar. A lot of them have to do with yellowing of the leaves, and uh, so sometimes it's hard to identify. But once you kind of figure it out, um, 
you'll identify a nutrient deficiency, you'll, you'll add that, supplement that nutrient, and you'll see it react. the leaves react. Keep an eye on it, maybe even keep a little log and record what you're seeing, and you'll, uh, you'll really figure it out, and you'll be able to identify it really easily once you kind of get used to it. So, um, so anyway, we'll, I'll kind of show you what I'm using to supplement and just how much I'm using. Okay, so we're over here on the loud side of the aquaponic system where all the water flows. I hope you can hear me okay, but this is uh, our fish tanks here, swirl filter, and down below is our sump tank. This is where I like to kind of add any type of nutrient supplements that I'm adding to the system. I never add anything directly to the fish tanks, but generally right in our swirl filter, I'll broadcast it around, stir it up there, um, or I'll put it right into our sump tank where it has time to kind of turn around and be pumped around a little bit before it gets to a fish. Um, so what I'm using to supplement iron, once you've identified an iron deficiency in the system by your leaf colors, um, or even just as kind of a regular maintenance thing, maybe every few months, is I'm adding an iron chelate. Now, chelated iron or iron chelate is basically a form of iron that is available to plants at a higher pH. Um, this is advertised for like golf courses and for a chlorosis of grass when you have iron deficiency in grass and grass gets yellow. This makes it nice and green. And so basically this can be used for uh, you know, treating chlorosis in plants as well. It doesn't harm your fish. It's, it's safe to be used in small amounts. Um, and what I look for is an iron that's derived from DTPA, and uh, from the research that I've done, that's the type of iron that's most available to plants at, again, higher pHs, um, and most readily available for an aquaponic system. Now, why do you have to use an iron chelate instead of, let's say, just throwing some rusty nails in your, in your aquaponic system, or throwing some steel in there and letting it rust, or whatever iron? The reason you, you can't do that is, um, iron is one of those nutrients, and I, I, I'll put a link at the top here to a video I did a long time ago about pH in aquaponic system, but iron is, is the one nutrient that is the most difficult to supplement and the most difficult to be available for your plants because it's only really readily available at a really low pH. So something like six, P, you know, pH of 6 and less is really where iron is most efficiently taken up by plants. So. You can't just throw in a natural form of iron into your system or, or like rust or something like that um, because most likely your plants won't really take up that form of iron very well. Uh, I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm not saying people haven't done it. I, I know I've seen other people do that. Uh, I'm just saying that it's, it's not really the, the best way to supplement iron. Chelated iron is available at pHs as high as 8 and uh, maybe even higher than that. And so this helps to, to supplement the, the nutrient very quickly. Um, this is right here I bought on Amazon. This is Iron Chelates, Carl Pool brand. Uh, I'll put a link in the description for this product because I think it's, it's probably the best value you're gonna find. Uh, I think it was $15, maybe 20. But this container right here is gonna last you forever almost. Uh, and it's, I've had this for a year. I've used probably just a couple tablespoons of it. Um, and you know, there's a lot in here. So I would say five to 10 years at a system this size. I've got about 150 to 200 gallons of water here in our, in our system. So if you run a bigger system like that, you may run through it quicker. But basically all you're gonna do, once you've identified an iron you know, deficiency, you've checked your leaves, you feel like you have some chlorosis, uh, just take a small tablespoon of the, uh, of the iron kilo. It's just a, a yellow powder basically. And then I just go ahead and, and sprinkle that around into the uh, swirl filter. I've already done it today, so I'm not going to do it again. But, um, and that's all I do. I just kind of sprinkle it right into a swirl filter or in the sump tank, mix it around a little bit. You can also mix it with water first, which is probably a better way to do it even. Mix it with water and then pour it in there. Uh, but it mixes up and dissolves very quickly. You're not going to use that much. Just do a little bit at a time. It's not harmful to your fish and, you know, uh, it's good for the plants, obviously. So. So that's what I've been, been doing to supplement iron. Now you should see in a few days or over the course of about a week, you should see that chlorosis start to go away. Um, any newer leaves that are growing on the plants, you should see that they don't have that problem. The older leaves should also start to look a little bit better. Um, I found that some of the really old leaves, uh, they may not kind of heal completely or take up all that iron, but you'll notice in the plant overall that that uh, deficiency goes away. So. So that's what I've been doing to kind of uh, supplement iron. Now I haven't found a, an organic or natural, you know, something around the homestead here that we can use um, because the chelated iron really is the best way to go. Um, again, I suppose you could throw iron in your aquaponic system and let it rust, and, and uh, although I don't think that works very well, um, it, it may work a little. So <laughs> that would be the, the natural homesteading way to do this. So it's, uh, if you guys have any questions or comments or things to add please throw those down in the description. I'd love to hear those, you know, um, what, 
things are you using to identify deficiencies in your system, what things are you using to supplement iron. Um, and I'm going to do a, uh, some other videos on magnesium and um, phosphorus, and I've already done one on calcium. I'll put links to that up above. Uh, but if you guys have questions, please let me know. Please hit thumbs up on the video. I really do appreciate it. And uh, subscribe to the channel. We've got um, aquaponics videos we try to release on a regular basis. All kinds of other gardening and DIY and sustainable type things we do around the homestead here. Um, repairs and home repairs, auto repairs, anything that we can do ourselves and share with others. So um, please uh, subscribe to the channel and check those other things out. We'd love to have you along. Uh, other than that, uh, you can follow us on simplesuburbanliving.com and also on any of the social media. So Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, um, and any of the other ones that are out there. Twitter. Uh, so Simples of Urban Living at any of those places. Links in the description for the uh, products that we talked about today as well as those social media sites. So as always, thanks for watching. Have a good one.